Hi, quick product review time. I got a new bit of road kit. It's the Rode PodMic USB. It's just come out. Um, cost me like 330 bucks or something like that. Aussie bucks, uh, that is. And yeah, designed and made here in Australia. So I thought I'd try it out. Now, <laughs> this is an incredibly chunky bit of kit. It's a, it looks like it's an end-on uh, mic type as opposed to the Rode NT1A that I've got. That's one of the world's lowest noise uh, mics and it's really good but it's got like a side-on uh, capsule like this. I have been using this uh, for years but I'm actually, uh, what you're hearing now is my ancient, before the blog, um, Samson CO1U USB mic because I've been having issues with the XLR, uh, my Scarlett um, XLR interface thing and I switched back to a USB mic and I've just been using it for a while but so Rode have come out with this new pod mic USB there it is made in Australia and it's got USB and XLR on the bottom it does come with a plug to plug up the XLR there and it's got a beautiful volume adjust here and that's actually indented and that's a multi-turn that's actually a digital um, thing and it's got USB-C interface it's got headphone for headphone monitoring aficionados which I am not I hate listening to my own uh, <laughs> voice let alone when I'm actually talking it's just no it's totally distracting um, but anyway it's got that for those who uh, do that and it's and I took it out of the box can't believe the weight of this thing I had to go weigh it. It's 880 grams. This thing weighs more, a lot more, than my entire NT1 um, with spider mount and, and cable and everything. It's just, wow, it is so chunky. That could actually be an issue if you're, uh, you know, if you've got it on a stand or something like that. Rode actually uh, teased on Twitter a new stand available for this thing. And I said, shut up and take my money. Where can I get it? And they said, you can't yet so anyway i want this real sexy desktop stand because i want it to come over my keyboard here like you know at, at the moment what i've got there's my uh co1u mic and it's on a boom arm which like is on a big stand which sits on the floor and stuff that's to sort of like decouple any uh you know uh, movement and vibration from the bench and stuff like that anyway this looks like and feels like an amazing bit of kit it actually comes it apparently it already has a pop filter in there but uh, it does actually come with this additional chunky um filter on here which i haven't put on yet there you go oh look at that oh that's a bobby dazzler um <laughs> That's absolutely amazing. I mean, it, it looks better, <laughs> you know, if, you, if you're if you shooting a podcast or whatever, like a video thing, and you want to have your mic in the shot. I prefer to have my mic out of shot, just out the bottom here, uh, which is why you can't see, you know, you might be able to see the stand, or which is why I keep this one, like, out of shot, just off to the side here. But anyway, um, yeah, let's try it out. Okay, check, check, check one, two. I'm about 30 centimeters away from my Samson CO1U mic. So I'll try and uh, level these out out in the editing just to make them uh, sound the same but anyway that's uh, that's about 30 centimeters if I go up closer like this which I don't normally talk that close but anyway this is the Samson CO1U all right check 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 one two I'm now using the Rode NT1A mic once again probably about 30 centimeters away if I go a bit closer to the Rode NT1A there you go uh, I don't have a pop filter uh, on that Anyway, check, check, check one, two. This is a Rode NT1A through my Scarlett um, Solo or whatever it is, USB uh, interface. Okay, this is the new PodMic USB uh, at the same audio level. You can probably hardly hear me. <laughs> so I've got it. Apparently there's some software that you can set up all sorts of tricky DSP stuff inside this thing. So I'm going to have to find it. All right, so what I've got now is the PodMic but I've turned the mic gain almost all the way up on my Scarlett um, USB interface. And now I think I'm at a similar signal level to what I was before. Once again, I'm about 30 centimeters away talking directly into the PodMic USB. So if I get closer to the PodMic USB, you might get some plosives from that. Let me put the pop filter on. And is that any better? This is me speaking right into the uh, PodMic USB check 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 one two check and i plugged in the usb into windows 10 here and it automatically came up and went to the default microphone haven't installed any drivers or anything so check 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 one two once again about 30 centimeters away from it and if i get closer to it check 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 one two move a bit further away check 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 one two 30 centimeters 
Yeah, so I'm actually liking the uh, clean interface on this. I don't think I'm going to need the uh, shock mount stand on it, especially if I use my boom like this. So it's just like a, a cleaner, neater, um, physical interface on my desk rather than having... So if you compare that with all of this uh, monstrosity that, you know, I've had to like swing out over my keyboard and stuff like that, this one's just physically nicer interface. So, so let me uh, shake the stand a little bit. Yeah, some vi I can physically see some vibration on the audio monitor coming through. This is why you have to decouple it from the bench, and you might need a spider mount. You can get a third-party spider mount for it, I guess, or if Rode sell one. But I'm liking how this can come right out over my keyboard like this, no whackers, and uh, yeah, it's, it just allows me to do my, you know, on-screen stuff and not have much in the way, so I'm really liking that. So here it is, and they claim it's got onboard DSP with Apex audio processing, ultra low noise, high gain revolution preamp. Uh, yeah, it's got the headphone output, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. And it's designed and made here in Sydney, Australia. Yes, I will probably eventually get around to doing the factory tour, which they have invited me on. Um, anyway, um, it's the Swiss Army mic. Oh, there you go. I'm marketing. Yeah, I, it's pretty good. And I just want the sexy stand they've showed. Yeah, look. Look, here's, here's the sexy stand, the desktop stand, which they have on their website, which they say is not available yet. I just like, imagine, like, I can imagine having that, um, like, um, under my, the back of my keyboard, which is slanted up, and then just having the mic come over the top. That'd be pretty sweet. Anyway, so maybe they will actually release that uh, sexy bit of kit, but... <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, um, yeah, apparently it's I can do all DSC, DSP stuff with this. So let's go. So Rode Central. I've already got Rode Central from um Central for my uh little wireless Go mics. So I'll just load up the Rode Central, connect a Rode device to get started. It's connected. Oh, do I have to download a new version? I don't know. Rode is awesome. Like I love the way that the little Go mics that I use for my remote, um, you know, when like out and about, just doing like interviews and remote wireless mic and stuff. Oh, the firmware update, Mwah! beautiful on that. Like, and the the interface works, but I don't know. Uh, do I need like a additional driver for this? I didn't read the manual. So yeah, I'll install the latest version because this has just been released. This mic, so it's obviously that it didn't uh, <laughs> didn't work. So let's launch Rode Central, shall we? And, ah, uh, yeah, now now it's detected. So, yes, you've got to have the latest version. There you go. PodMic USB firmware. Um, Yeah, and the firmware updating should be easy. It should tell us if, like, it's out of date and stuff. I don't know who's doing the uh, software at Rode, but seriously, hats off. Um, They do a fantastic interface, and it just works, and it's seamless, and, ah, it's beautiful. Anyway, here we go. We can go. There you go. PodMic USB. So the gain is low. So, yeah, that's why... Our, when I connected the XLR interface, it was very low. So you can go from 63, which is maximum, I might be sounding a bit hot at the moment, right down, I'll keep talking as I do this, and it should go, oh, no? Oh, 50, really? No, it's a little bit laggy. There you go, it goes right down to 22, you can probably, can't hardly hear me at all now. There you go, it goes right down to 22, you can probably, can't hardly hear me at all now. Right, and I don't know if there's any uh, additional delay on this because uh, I've got a 300 millisecond delay set up in XSplit, which uh, is, uh, you know, it tries to sync up my where, wherever my audio comes from, even my Scarlett USB interface or via the direct USB interface, what, like a USB mic like this, and my uh, Ava Media video capture card coming from my uh, camera. So, yeah, I've got it. So hopefully the sync is okay. <laughs> But this should be low latency, this mic. I think the delay is due to my like camera and capture card. That's why I've got to add that delay in there. Anyway, we can set the depth. Um, so I don't know, what does depth do? So we just hold that, we can adjust the depth. I'm now adjusting the depth of my voice. My voice now has maximum depth. Oh, I don't like that dicky interface. No, I hate that. Please change that. No, I hate, I hate this interface. Please, please change that. I was just pra I'm praising their software department. Oh, God, no. Anyway, my voice now has minimal depth. Minimal depth, Dave. And now we are going maximum depth, Dave. Tell me which one's better. I won't know until I hear this back. Sparkle. My voice has some sparkle. It now has maximum sparkle. As if my voice needs sparkle. Goodness. Oh, this is so frustrating. These controls are garbage. Please fix them. Now my voice has minimum sparkle. Minimum sparkle. 
and maximum sparkle. <laughs> and punch. My voice now has no punch. My voice has no punch. Punch to my voice. Maximum punch. <laughs> So this video is more for me to be able to like tailor my voice, my, my infamously crappy voice. And now I can turn off all processing. Hello? Can I turn off all? Yeah, there we go. It's a little bit laggy. Okay, what have we got in the advanced mode here? In advanced mode, look at this. Oh, we've got... Threshold the attack, the gain. Oh, whoa, what, what, what happened there? Oh. Is there some issue with the my USB interface or something? Don't know. Oh, it's a bit of a concern. But anyway, you've got full compressor built into your mic. You don't need an external compressor. Okay, I don't have any compressor at the moment. Okay, so compressor's off. Now compressor is, and now the compressor is on. So, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> so I've probably been talking with the compressor the whole time. So anyway, so what I'll do is I'll turn compressor off okay so this is more like so i'll turn all processing off okay so this is what noise floor test you can might be able to hear some aircon or something but this is what my voice sounds like totally unprocessed that advanced stuff oh look oh it's a little bit dicky <laughs> something's going on there and what is bb um a uh, big bottom <laughs> I've now Dave's now got a big bottom. There you go. And you can adjust the frequency and the drive of your big bot. Like I can make my voice sound like here we go. This is <laughs> I've got now big bottom voice Dave and Dave without big bottom voice and oral exciter. Like you, wow. Wow, you could really tailor your that that's worth the price of emission on this mic alone. Really, the built-in DSP of this thing. Uh, like the fact that it's got USB and XLR, fantastic. Okay, it's it's a Rode, Rode top quality, you know, uh, microphone capsules, top quality sound, everything else. But the fact that it's got DSP built in now that can do a, a compressor and exciter and all this sort of stuff, that is super, super impressive. And have we got more? We can, we've got a noise gate as well. Incredible. Like, I, I don't need a noise gate here, but if we had like an aircon noise or something, you know, that might help out. Um, and then we've got frequency response, so we can whack in our, yep, there you go. You would want a high pass filter, so here we go. I'll wiggle the stand here. So I'm wiggling the stand with the 60 hertz high pass filter on. High pass filter is now off. And I'm wiggling the stand. Maybe that will come through, I don't know. Doubt it. But anyway, you could actually use that to, once again, like take out air con noise. I've, I've actually spectrum, spectrumly looked at, <laughs> spectrumly looked at the air con noise here in my lab. And I think it's about 130 hertz, 120, something like that. It's, it's just over the 100 uh, hertz range. So I could actually um, set that. No, oh no. Oh no, I was hoping we can set that. We, we can't. It's 60 hertz only. Uh, that's a bit disappointing considering all the other DSP goodness in there. Um, please? Add some like DSP for like to, to set the high pass filter. Obviously, like they might actually have that in circuitry inside and you're just switching the signal path to the filter, I'd say. But yeah, yeah please. Um, firmware upgrade. Add a DSP filter. If you can do all the other stuff, you, you can do a high pass filter in software. So yeah. Anyway, there you go. That is the pod mic. USB, and I could play with this until the cows come home. I won't know what it sounds like until I play it back during editing, um, but I'm sure, like, Rode don't make crap mics. Rode make top quality mics. <laughs> Industry top quality mics. And um, I always love the uh, interface. And, yeah, you don't have to run this software. That'll, you know, you just set it once inside the mic, and then it's set up, and you've, got, you've tailored it for your particular voice. So I'm going to have to play with this a lot. And tailor it for my particular voice, I guess. So if my video sounds slightly different, although I do want to match. So I've got a Rode NT55 mic on top of my camera, so I do want to keep that Rode sound. So when I switch between, you know, behind the mic recording and microphone here at the uh, bench, I, at the desktop, like shooting screen capture and whatnot, I want it to sound very similar. So I don't know if I'll turn on all that fancy wanky DSP stuff, but uh, I can do. I can make my voice sound deeper and sexier.
<laughs> anyway, no more high-rising terminal for me. <laughs> I doubt it. Can't help it. Strain it. Anyway, that is a very impressive bit of kit. What is the, uh, I assume it's cardoid uh, pattern, right? Anyway, there you go. That is the new Rode PodMic USB, and it's built like a brick dunny. Oh, it weighs a ton. It feels super quality. I don't know how I'm going to do a teardown of this thing. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a teardown. Hopefully I don't destroy it, but uh, there might be some secret squirrel way to get it apart or something. But yeah, that is an impressive bit of kit. I probably don't sound terrific at the moment because I'm not talking directly into it like I am now because you've got to speak on axes. But uh, yeah, I do believe it would be a cardioid interface if I point it away like this. You can still, still audio level, but... Anyway, yeah, that's just a great looking mic, great feeling, great uh, quality, and all built in DSP and everything else. So that is an amazing bit of kit, even though it's heavy, it's working on my stand really well. And I think I'm going to be happy with this one. So like my Rode NT1A, fantastic uh, studio mic, but I have been having uh, issues with my Scarlett um, Phantom uh, power XLR interface. So um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really have a need for this anymore. I guess I might uh, <laughs> might sell it complete with stickers. There you go. A rare Australian Space Agency sticker and a Bitcoin sticker. Brilliant. Anyway, pod mic USB um, sounds really good so far, even though I haven't actually listened to it, which I will. <laughs> and I'll leave it in the comments if there's anything sus. Anyway, leave your thoughts and comments down below on what this mic sounds like in compared to the other two. Catch you next time.